Hello everybody and welcome to another Mac 84 live stream. I'm Steve and and welcome. Uh, let's make sure the audio and the video are okay as I reach over and grab the trackball here. Okay, let's make sure that that everything looks okay, but we, we could just never be so sure. So sounds great. Okay, thank you, Jordan. Thank you, Scarlet Swordfish. Got a bunch of here, a bunch of people here too. Malto, we got Classy Mac. Uh, we got Scarlet Swordfish, Zombie Geek 33, uh, XX Dirty Gamer 21. That's a screen name right out of the 1990s. Um, Aaron, we have who else we got? I just keep scrolling by. We have David. Hello, David, and uh, and Bruce. Bruce from Vegas Creations. Awesome. Like the Mac you got there. Good, good. No, you didn't miss anything. We just started. There's no blood yet. So <laughs> yet, yeah. I don't. I don't know what's gonna go on here. All right, cool. So, all right. So, this thing was posted um, on Craigslist for a while, and uh, I periodically look at Craigslist things, and um, I, I passed over this. This is a Power Macintosh uh, 7166. I passed over it initially. The original asking price was $50. Um, I already have, I think, two of these or three of these 7100 machines. Didn't really think that uh, there was anything special about it. Uh, there was this Sonnet badge on the front. However, um, the seller did not want to open the, the case and did not know anything about it. He said he found it in the attic. Okay. So um, I messaged uh, the seller, and uh, this was paid a few weeks ago, and it was at $50. And um, yeah, I don't, I don't need to spend $50 on a gamble for one of these. I have one that's working, so it's like, whatever. Um, so... Today, uh, I went to uh, visit a store that is about an hour away, and this was about an hour away, so this was, this was not very close to me at the beginning. And uh, I happened to just be browsing on Craigslist, and I saw this again, but the price was slashed to $25, so it was 50% off. So I thought, well, you know what? For $25, since I'll be in the area anyway, um, that's not too bad. Um, I could use parts from this if, if the machine doesn't work at all. There's at least look, look what looks like a graphics card. Um, there's at least a CD drive here, power supply, maybe some memory. So, 25 bucks, not bad. Now, there is this badge here. And so, for those of you who can't see or are not familiar with this, uh, this is a badge that says Powered by Sonnet, Simply Fast. So, Sonnet, uh, Sonnet Technologies makes processor upgrades. For Macintoshes. And so the big question is does this have a Sonnet CPU upgrade card in it? Which we're going to find out just in a moment here. Uh, I saw this actually posted. Somebody posted a, a photo of this from Craigslist on the um, uh, which Facebook group is that? It's the uh, Vintage Apple Enthusiast Facebook group. And they said, oh, I, I wonder if this actually has a uh, card in it. And so uh, I responded to that said, hey, I'm doing a live stream in a bit. We'll see. So I picked it up. I'm uh, satisfied I did. It's missing one of the feet here, as a lot of these are. Um, this is a metal case, so it's in pretty good condition, I, I suppose. Um, and, uh, yeah, oh, Action Retro is here. Who else do I miss here? Golden Panda. And, uh, yeah, cool. All right. So we got a got 25 people here already. Uh, don't forget to uh, press that like button if you haven't done that already. And uh, if you are not subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do that because I am working on uh, sort of something that I've been doing for, for a long time, uh, a video on the Macintosh clones, and I'm, I'm almost done with part one, so I'm going to get that out there soon. But uh, yes, Action Retro has an awesome video uh, on his, his beige G3 that he's supercharged into a G4 and then some. Go watch his, his multi-part video. Maybe I'll take a page out of his book and... <laughs> do that to this if it doesn't have a G3 upgrade card already. So, all right. Oh, hello, Sean. Yes, purple power. Exactly, exactly. All right, exactly to the other Sean as well. All right, so, um, yeah, let's let's open this up and see if uh, <laughs> if this actually has some, some purple power in it. What do you say? So, again, this is just a 7166. This is the first model of the 70. Uh, 100 series before they upgraded it so we're gonna we're gonna take the case off here there is a uh, there is a video card here there's actually I didn't notice this before there's tape here 
it looks like it says Super Mac Video. So it looks like it says Super Mac Video, which is great because they made they made pretty awesome video cards. Uh, that was by a company called Radius. Uh, they made uh, video cards with the Super Mac uh, brand name. So we have, um, oops, ow, <laughs> no blood yet. Uh, we have uh, three, well, three slots here and then this sort of opening here. I, I can't really see what's in here. So we're gonna open this up. Uh, any way to get a power button for my Mac 7500 that looks original. Uh, Classy Mac, I would suggest getting a, a 3D printed one. I don't know if you have to paint them these days. I have one that's broken also, so I'm in the same boat. Uh, my brother is a 3D printer, so maybe I can get him to print some of that stuff. So, all right, you guys ready? What 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 are your bets? Do you think it's going to have a Sonic card in there? Do you think it's not? I have a suspicion, but I want to know what you guys think. Do you think there's a Sonic card in here? Or do you think it is not? All right, we're getting yeses, we're getting noes. I like to be optimistic. I'm going to say yes. Yeah, I hope the battery hasn't exploded as well. I didn't even think of that, but for $25, it is worth the gamble. All right, so we should be able to just pull this forward. Up, oh, the hard drive has been removed. So somebody swiped the hard drive from this machine, but look at what we got here, a Sonnet CPU upgrade. Now this, car, this computer is dusty, but we do have a Sonnet CPU upgrade card. And it's actually uh, made for the 7100 or 8100, actually. Uh, I have no idea on the specs. It's not purple, actually. It's a little disappointing. It's just a, your standard black heat sink. Uh, <laughs> it's a little funny, though, because the uh, video adapter is pointing this way, which would go directly into the power supply. So that's not exactly... Um, yeah, that's not, <laughs> that's not going to do us any favors. Oh boy, but I'm excited. That's that's great that uh, that's great that it has the the upgrade card in there. Now I have no idea if the machine works. There's a lot of dust in here. Uh, we're about to find out if the if the uh, if the battery has exploded. Let's let's take a look here. Uh, I see a purple battery, so at least we got some purple in here. I don't see anything horrible, so that's good. We're gonna remove that though. We're gonna remove that battery because we don't we don't want any of that. But uh, it's a bit of a shame the hard drive's not there, um, but nothing a SCSI 2SD adapter wouldn't fix. Again, $25, not too bad so far. Uh, if I paid $50 and the hard drive wasn't there, even if it was an old clunker, kind of kind of would have been uh, annoyed. But um, yeah, this is a, a 1994 Power Mac. Interesting, the, the logic board there says 93, 94. Uh, this is what looks to be a Super Mac video card. I'm actually going to take that out. Let's put the camera right here, back on the tripod. All right, so that's exciting. First off, we do have a Sonnet upgrade card in here, so that answers that question. Let's see if we can find out any information about this. Yeah, I'm sure there's a, well, there's a lot of dust here, Bruce, that's for sure. All right, so this is a Super Mac card. Uh, it is a Super Mac card from 1991, uh, version 1.6 on the uh, ROM chip right there. It's pretty good. And, uh, yeah, let's see. Well, if you're in the United States, uh, I may be able to help you with some recapping, but, uh, if you want to send it to Bruce, you're more than welcome to do so. <laughs> All right. Yeah, this may be the same card, Scarlet Swordfish. Uh, we have an assembly number here. 000-8235-0001-REV-B. No idea what card this is, and uh, I'm sure the drivers uh, can be downloaded online somewhere. Well, let's see. Let's uh, do the, a little uh, tinkering here. Now, the thing is, and I, and I was talking to uh, Bruce about this before, there are two screws here, and actually, <laughs> someone has gone ahead and painted these screws red. So uh, maybe they were trying to tell somebody, hey, here's how to open the machine. Um, very interesting, but put some red marker or something. Uh, so I'm going to try and at least take that battery out and, uh, and go from there. Yes, thank goodness for Macintosh Garden. And um, yeah, where's my, where's my regular screwdriver? I need a, uh, a Phillips screwdriver. Let's see if 
This one might be too small. Nope, that works okay. Maybe, maybe, maybe. No, nope. It's going to strip the screw or the bit. And by the cheap screwdriver bit I have, it's probably going to be the bit. All right, well, I can loosen it up with this flathead. I just realized I left my screwdrivers uh, upstairs because I was taking apart something upstairs. But uh, we should get by. Hopefully. I should get an iFixit kit. The only problem is every kit I get, whether it's a $10 kit or a $100 kit, I misplace those bits like crazy. And I'd much rather misplace those bits of a $10 kit than a uh, more expensive kit. That being said, if any generous folks from iFixit adore my channel, you're welcome to gift me something. <laughs> We'll just see if I don't misplace these screws, I'd be happy with that. All right, so this kind of comes off here, and there's <laughs> there's a uh, there's a way to do this. I, I I really am well. There's a plastic bit here that's holding the power supply in that I am sure I'm gonna crack if I if I'm not too careful here. But all I really want to do we got we got four we got a post-it note on the memory here, so I really want to take this apart. Let's be careful with this here. Um, so we got this piece of plastic here that is holding the power supply. This sort of like lifts up. We have some rust here, but that's on the metal part. Um, yeah, let's. Uh, you know what? It would not be a bad idea to look up the service manual for this, so I don't I don't destroy the poor thing. How about that? Probably not a bad idea now, is it? So let's do that. So I haven't taken apart one of these in a very long time. Uh, the power supply is a Delta Electronics power supply. Okay, so to take it apart, we have to take apart, we have to take out the CD drive. So we're gonna do that first. And let me let me make sure my uh, window here is not going to be covering everybody, so I can still see what uh, you guys are typing in the chat. So let me uh, take out the CD drive first. <laughs> if, if I don't if I don't rip off in my fingers on the uh, the metal shielding here, which is always always so fun on these machines. Well, the take apart says I do, Bruce, but um, let, let me go through this and see. It says take apart the CD-ROM. Lift up the power supply, unplug the cables, and then the whole thing flips open. Maybe the maybe the CD drive is just as a precautionary type thing, but uh, all right. So let's say uh, okay. So if I squeeze, well, we'll see if this plastic is as brittle as some of it is. We will gently squeeze this. Well, some of the edges already snapped, but that's that's. Not my, not my doing. So if you're being gentle, gentle, gentle. All right, so that has survived so far. Let's not celebrate too soon. There we go. That little plastic retaining clip or whatever it is has worked fine. Uh, what computer do I use to stream? Well, I am using a 2009 uh, Mac Pro, and it's a dual uh, CPU, 2.93 uh, gigahertz uh, Xeon. Nothing too fancy, but it, it does very well. I used to use a 2008, and the CPU would kind of get pegged when I was live streaming. So I'm, I'm glad that uh, I'm glad that uh, I have a little bit of room there now. So that helps. Let's see what else. Yeah, I mean, usually the, uh, you, I, I, it, yeah, I'm, I'm like getting dust everywhere and I'm stammering. Usually the batteries I would expect to go bad on earlier systems. Um, l let's see when we get to it. I haven't had a good look at it yet. All right, so we have a little latch here, apparently. It's been a long time since I take one of these, took in, taken one of these apart. Uh, pry the latch away from the base. What latch? <laughs> What latch? Oh, that's why they want you to remove the CD drive. 
<laughs> That's why. There's a little latch there that is not exactly the easiest to get to. But I don't have to remove the whole thing. I'm just going to pull it forward. Yes, we will be uh, we will be doing some tests. Oh, if I could. Uh... There we go. It's only been in there for what, 30 years or so. All right, so that is uh, that is there. All right, so we should be able to just lift out this power supply now. We undid that little latch there. Sorry that you can't really see this right now. I'm just trying to work my way through this, and then we'll and we'll show you the good stuff here. Ah. Yeah, just lift the power supply out. Yeah, easier said than done. Oh, wait, there's probably a screw. Yes, there is. Of course there's a screw. I'm glad I didn't try too hard. Well, when tantalums fail, they tend to fail spectacularly. Uh, thankfully, I have not had uh, any of them do that to me yet. There we go. No, no, no. Brains over bronze, buddy. <laughs> Brains over bronze. All right. Let's move this out. All right. Always helps when you follow the directions. Does not help to have the directions in front of you and not follow them like a foolish person. Okay. Let's get this power supply out. And we got it out. So that is a Delta Electronics uh, model number SMP120EB2. There we go. Oop, well, good luck, Lord of Nothing. Sorry about your power situation. That's lame. All right, so we got a ton of dust in here and a plastic clip. I wonder where this went. <laughs> where did you come from, plastic clip? Is it from you? No. Well, I guess we'll soon find out. Um, we should be able to... Oopsie. Should be able to... Follow the rest of these instructions. That's what we should be able to. All right, you're guessing the battery is from 98. Uh, that would be uh, too new for this model, but maybe they replaced it. Who knows? Okay, so lift the front of the chassis until the chassis is perpendicular to the bottom case. Okay. <laughs> it's a 7100, Mike. And it has a Sonic card in there. <laughs> what am I doing? <laughs> oh boy, this should just come out according to the manual. According to the manual. Yes, I took the screw at the back. So now there's just that screw that doesn't go anywhere. But I took the power screw, the power supply screw out. Uh, this does lift. Kind of. And it's uh... a... <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Lift up higher. Okay. Well, <laughs> the whole machine is lifting up with me. Oh, come on, buddy. Well, at least the battery looks okay. And there's a, uh, there's a post-it note on the memory. I'm very eager to read that. <laughs> this, is, this is a workout. You know, those, those things, those commercials you see where you, where you put the, uh, uh, that rubber ball in your mouth and you're supposed to exercise your chin or something like that well this is the apple version of that you're you have a uh, you have a power mac and you're supposed to exercise with the chassis here <laughs> yes i'm aware of how stupid that sounded but yeah the cables are uh, are unplugged they are not what is uh so let's let's move this around a little bit So everything is loose, uh, with the exception of uh, here and here. They're kind of like, I guess they're like little metal thingies, uh, grips, whatever you want to call them. And let's see. Hello, Kate. Welcome to the madness of <laughs> trying to get this thing out of here. Oh boy, yes, the Apple eye muscle rub, uh, 
workout has to come up to about 45 degrees. What's stopping it from coming up? That's a good question. Oh, we have the optical drive cable that I did not see. There we go. Thank you, Bruce. Ah, there we go. So that's the little hooks on the side there. That's what's keeping it in there. Thank you very much, Bruce, for that assistance. Yes, this is a Power Macintosh 7100. And we have a probably a 2X CD-ROM drive. Uh, CD-ROM drive from February 1993. Manufactured, wait, firm, oh, firmware is from 93. Uh, manufactured, 95, an Apple CD300 Plus. Which, oh gosh, this thing is just all sorts of dusty. We're going to put that on the ground here. And hopefully we don't roll over it with our chair. It's not on fire yet, but I almost cut myself with this stupid metal shielding of that CD-ROM drive. No, thank you. Okay, here's, here's what I wanted to look at. Because we have a post-it note here where the memory is. We have a post-it note here. So uh, we have 60, wait a second. We have 64 megabytes plus 16 plus eight on the motherboard. This thing has 88 megabytes of memory. Damn, <laughs> that's awesome. I hope this still works. That's a, not an inconsequential amount of memory for a system like this. So that's pretty good. Oh, this thing is dusty. Just look at all that dust. We are, we're going we're gonna to have to tidy this up a little bit. Um, the caps actually look okay. Nice shiny pads. Uh, no leakage that I can see. I will remove the battery. It is, it is not going to explode in the, in the next 10 seconds, I assure you. Okay, so now I see where that clip was. That clip actually went here to secure the board. So that, that's the plastic casualty that we have from our, our Michael Spindler plastics here. All right, this, oh, wait a second. So the front of the machine said 66, and the board said it says 80, 80 megahertz here. Oh, what the heck is going on? <laughs> What's going on here? Do we get, do we get a mismatched case? What's, what's going on here? What's, what's, it's not focusing because this camera is, is terrible sometimes. Come on. Come on. There we go. 80 megahertz. The case says 66. So something something is uh, is weird here. Huh. I know. It's, it's so strange. Well, I like feeding pig strawberries. So that's, that's good. Yes, this is a Power Macintosh 7100, um, and we're, we're going to try turning it on. I'm just going to try dusting this off first. Um, yeah, maybe they did a board swap, but uh, they upgraded uh, with the Sonnet uh, processor upgrade card anyway. So, uh, yeah. All right, we're going to uh, remove this battery to let everybody in the chat have a, have a sigh of relief here. So don't worry, the battery will be removed momentarily. And yeah, I, I really need, uh, I should have taken this out the thing outside and dusted it off, but I had no idea it was gonna be just so dusty. Oopsie, there we go. Get some nice, beautiful shot here. All right, who wants to guess what year is on the battery here? This will go in my collection, of course. We have a battery that Y E, I'm sorry, Y A E zero one ninety five. So probably good, either until nineteen ninety five or was manufactured in nineteen ninety five. So not bad. There's uh, another battery for my collection, of course. I do not know what I'll do with them, but uh, yeah. Okay, so these are nicely labeled. We have eight megabyte, eight megabyte. Um, so that seems to be what uh, this post-it was telling us. I'm gonna take the post-it out of here because it's just gonna get dusty but we'll, we'll put that somewhere on the case and uh yeah i mean besides the dust this thing lo looks okay so let, let's uh try and clean this thing out so let's put the camera back on the tripod so you're not staring at my shorts because nobody that's not what you came here for if it was you are on the wrong channel Uh, this thing is caked with dust. Simply caked. I mean, just look at that. Let's look. Ooh. 
Ugh. Yeah, it's uh, this needs a good cleaning. So uh, we're gonna do our best. Just uh, briefly here. Uh, yeah, sure. We could we could put a, a G4 upgrade in here and play on Roar Tournament. Why not? <laughs> something something tells me that is not that's not gonna be uh, exactly what we're gonna accomplish here. But. And there goes my multimeter. Uh, we have our trash bin here. And uh, where's my face mask when I need it? I'm going to breathe in all this dust here. I'm going to take the Sonic card out and get a better look at this thing. So no purple heat sink. But we do have a black heat sink. Um, no real indication of the speed. If I'm going to have a guess, I'm going to guess it's like a 233 megahertz. Something around that. I, I have one of these before uh, that has... Uh, it's about 200 megahertz or so, so no speed indicator on here. So that that's what I'm going to guess. Use the multimeter to test the battery. Well, let's see what we get. Beepity beep beep. Not in beepity mode. We don't need beepity mode. We want battery mode. All right. Zero point ten volts. How about that? That'll work fine, wouldn't it? And what's this other one here? This one was pulled out of God knows where. That one is totally dead. Zero point ten volts. Uh, I do have some canned air. Uh, I am not going to be spraying it all around because it's just going to go around the basement here. Uh, I will uh, be purchasing. Uh, Techmon did a video on compressed air. And there was this pretty neat little thing. It looked like a tiny little vacuum. It almost looked like the size of a teapot. About $30 or $40. I almost bought one today. But uh, the store I was at, uh, Micro Center, had it a little bit pricier than I thought I saw it online. And uh, not that I'm thinking I should have just bought the stupid thing there. But I, I am an idiot like that sometimes. So uh, what I will be doing is I will try and just lift this board out. And I'll try and dust it uh, as much as I can. And uh, we'll see from there. <laughs> Yes, Bruce, that's a keeper. <laughs> so I'm going to unplug the speaker here. I'm going to try not to destroy the restart and interrupt plastic buttons here. Please don't break for me. Please don't. We want this plastic to last a few more years, huh? At least until I get a 3D printer. Then I can do this myself. Oh, come on. Yeah, that's not, that's not happy, is it? Come on. Maybe. Oh, I see. Well, yeah. Let's uh, let's move this around a little bit. Ah, Palm Pilot uh, Seven. Nice. But you guys are very chatty today. I can hardly keep up. My goodness. All right. So. Oh boy. Yeah, we got a bunch of these cables here. I am going to unplug them. Thankfully, I should remember where they go. <laughs> Fast forward to 20 minutes from now where I have no idea where one of these cables go. Well, that's nice you got a working battery in your SE. Uh, I would take that out though, Aaron. <laughs> you know why. <laughs> it may look like it's working until the day it doesn't. And then kaboom. All right. Um, let's get this board out of here carefully let's go uh, back to our instructions here and uh, follow the take apart all right so we took apart the fan already we took everything out we took all the cards out uh, we're not going to have to take the speaker out i don't think so uh what else we got uh, before you begin Remove the power supply, reset, interrupt, and speaker is optional. Okay. Well, Tom, Tom, uh, I do recapping. Uh, I cannot guarantee if I recap your PowerBook screen if if that will fix the issue though. But uh, if you need some recapping done, uh, and. Uh, you'd like, uh, I will volunteer my services. Um, feel free to send me an email. Oh, there's the foot. Yeah, it's only missing one foot. And uh, potentially that'll work out. Whoopsie. 
I, I, I put out many different notifications, Jay. How dare you ignore them? Welcome to the party, pal. As I slice my fingers open on this thing. Come on. Come on. <laughs> Come on. We're almost out there. There we go. Welcome to the party, Jay. Just in time for us to remove our interrupt and reset buttons. So there you go. Well, I both put it in the iMessage group that you are both a part of. Not my fault if you do not look. <laughs> it's also on Twitter and Discord. I mean, what do you want from me? <laughs> oh, boy. Okay, so now that that has been removed, we should just be able to slide this board forward because we have these old plastic tracks here. <laughs> He's up. Oh, there's a screw there. Of course, there's one screw. Okay, now with that screw removed, we should be able to do this. Hello, Trino. Welcome to the chat. Uh, Canada shipping is not too bad, actually. I had somebody send me something from Canada not too long ago. I sent something from some to someone in Canada not long ago. It wasn't too bad. Uh, send me an email at mac84tv at gmail.com. I can calculate the shipping based on uh, some factors, or I give, at least give you a boxed weight of what it would be. And uh, we go from there. If it's too much, that's all right. No hard feelings. Just thought I'd offer. Another screw hiding here, is there? Is there? Well, there's this plastic doohickey here, but it looks like the board could actually clear that. Uh, no, that should be okay. Let's double check. This is a Power Macintosh 7100. I really should have some fancy graphics or something to tell people. I'm not that fancy yet, so there we go. My goodness. All right, well, there's all the dust on the bottom. A little bit hard to see that. I will uh, zoom in. Look at that nice dust pattern here. Oh, boy. At least the bottom of the board is clean. <laughs> oh boy all right let's put that camera back there okay all right so let's let's get some uh dust out of here well see that's the thing i don't i don't want to just push the power button that's a very good uh, observation though i don't want to just push the power button and see if it works because uh, things like this have exploded on me before, whether it's a bad power supply or some leaking capacitors, uh, especially a machine that I have on an unknown condition. The seller never turned it on, just found it in their attic and uh, could have got very hot in that attic, could have had uh, some issues there. So something I'd, I'd like to avoid is catastrophe, if at all possible. The date on the metal case is March 7th, 1995. So that may have just been when the metal case was manufactured, not necessarily the machine. <sighs> Again, I should be wearing my face mask. <laughs> oh boy. And I'm not cleaning this perfectly, but we're just getting out most of the dust here. <sighs> Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there's a, a little bit of rust here. Not too bad. Let's see if I can undo this with one hand. No, I can't. There's a teeny little bit of rust right here. But that's really all that I see. So that's, that's not too bad. But, uh, yeah. Not too bad at all. Yes, it does get hot in someone's New Jersey attic, so. Yeah. Uh, again, I do have some compressed air, um, but uh, I don't want to blow this dust while I blew the dust everywhere else. Actually, let me, uh, let me move this over here. All right, so I have, I have this trash bin behind me. You're not going to see this, but I am, I have, uh, well, let me, yeah, let me try and get it in frame here. So I have this little brush, and the, the clumps are so big, I'm just able 
to get them, most of them out here. The fine, fine artistic method to doing this, of course. We'll paint in some happy little capacitors here. Just some happy little capacitors. Some happy little Sonnet CPU upgrades here. The same paintbrush I used to clean off CRTs because it has a nice wooden handle that is very long. So I don't have to touch anything if I don't want to. Yes, it, I, I'm painting a beautiful Power Macintosh here, isn't it? This is an early vintage 1994 Power Macintosh painted by Steve of Mac 84. The bidding starts at $5 billion. What a bargain. At least I didn't put polka dots on it, huh? Not too bad. Again, compressed air would be ideal. I uh, need to get one of those little machine thingies. If anybody has one of those, let me know if you like it or not. Um, surprised I'm not sneezing up a storm. <laughs> I will in about a few minutes, I'm sure. Most of the dust is going into the trash pan, thankfully. For those of you just tuning in, yes, I am insane. For those of you already here, you already knew that. So. All right, that looks not too shabby, if I do say so myself. All right, that's not too bad. So we're going to just make sure I didn't catch anything uh, else that's inside of this. <laughs> no, Dana, that is my rich, snooty person voice, but the two could be easily confused. I do have a shop vac, but it is way too large. I actually have a small one in the garage. I should actually bring that out. Hey, Mike, your first Power Mac was a 7100. I care. I care. Ah, yes. A lot of Apple's early monitors. 640 by 480 should be enough for anybody. All right. That is a lot less dusty than it was before. So now we have to put it back together. Yay. All right. Well, if I used a vacuum, I wouldn't be able to do stupid voices to it, and that, that would have been no fun. No fun. Well, this is this is YouTube, rather. This is very serious business. We are not allowed to have fun on YouTube. I'm very sorry. Those are the rules. I, I did not make them. Okay, so let's make sure that this board is actually uh, properly in the right place, and we could just... Should be able to seat that back. Maybe half of it wants to go. <laughs> what is going on? Oh boy. Okay, just reading about this stuff. Ba -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. <laughs> Ultra rare dust, yes. Well, Mike, you don't have to do that, but that's a very nice thought. I think the ShopVac brand I have is simply called ShopVac. <laughs> yes, yeah, so once I get the dust bunnies uh, from this and I mix it with the bunny hair that I have, uh, and then that, that's an ultra rare item. <laughs> okay, this desk was clean. Was. Now it's messy again. Sorry. There's a lot of goodies to look at. Look at all the goodies. There you go. First Mac was a snow iMac. Not bad. Yeah, yeah. I'll shut up and boot the sucker already. Premium dust. Priced accordingly. It's collector's dust. In a collector's market, Dana. Collector's dust. Alright. That should be... I guess I guess these these sound ports and these uh, ADV ports and stuff just never never really like touch the back of the 
Unless this is like weird here. I'm just trying to get this to something is not. Yeah, this is not fully back. I don't think. Let me slide it out. Let's slide it back in again. <laughs> yeah, nothing's in the way there. I don't think. No. Technical note said something about putting it back. Uh, ba -ba -da, position the edge corner to the edge of the plastic bracket inside and slide it back in. Well, I did that. I did that. Oh, well. Well, we'll see. We'll see what happens. All right, so let's uh, let's actually clean uh, the contacts here. Uh, where's my Q-tips? There they are. And uh, where's my alcohol? Here it is. Delicious alcohol. <laughs> yes, I cleaned the computer. Now it's not as valuable. I also am going to test it, which also makes it not as valuable. All right, so I'm just, this, this connector is a little bit dirty for the processor upgrade card. So we're just going to clean that. Now I actually think I need to download a driver to get this to work. So. Uh, if I boot it up with the card installed, we may have to uh, actually take it out to get the system on there. But uh, hey, what's uh, what's a nice relaxing Sunday night installation of uh, system? What 7.1.3 I think was the first version that supported the Power Max. Uh, we'll 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 do it some justice and put 7.5 on here or 7.6 just to make everybody happy. Nobody's ever all happy, but. All right, so enough yammering. Uh, that looks okay. Uh, we got some dust still on memory modules. Ding, ding. Oh. Almost managed to punch, punch a hole through that speaker. Don't do what I do and just lift this thing up willy-nilly without looking where you're placing your fingers. Where'd that brush go? There it is. We want to hear that startup chime. We don't want to break it. All right. Put our reset and interrupt switches back in here. Yeah, that's what my guess is, Mike. I think it's about uh, 600 megahertz or so. Well, this this does have uh, a lot of memory, so we shall see how well this thing actually runs. Let's uh, put these uh, reset and interrupt buttons back in there. Perfect. Okay, now let's uh, put our cables back in. <laughs> Some dusty cables, but uh, be okay. Let's go put our SCSI cable in. Oh, I'm sorry, Trina. There's a lot of people chatting, and I missed your question. Scroll up. Where did you get the goodies from? What goodies? All this, all this, this stuff here. <laughs> Please be more specific. <laughs> Tiger install. Oh boy. Yeah, that'll, that'll take a good uh, few hours. Uh, yeah, this particular uh, Mac I, I saw on uh, Craigslist a few weeks ago. It was $50. And uh, the guy reduced it to $25. I just happened to be in the area because it's usually about, this is usually about an hour and a half away or so uh, where I got this from. So I, I would have not have driven out there just for this because I have one of these machines already. And I was questionable if this card was in there, and it was. So how about that? Uh, Sebastian says, I uh, was thinking of using the touchscreen on iPad 1 to use along with the RetroPie for an iCade. Uh, I don't know you could do that. That's um, So you're, you're talking about dismantling the touchpad, uh, the touch digitizer of an iPad 1? Or are you meaning just docking the iPad 1 or hacking it? Uh, I've actually used MAME on the iPad 1 with an iCade, you know, the hard uh, um, wooden arcade thingy in the joystick worked okay all right and we have our power cord here plug that back in and we have our cd-rom cable here plug that back in we'll be leaving the battery out of this one but i will put the little plastic thing back on here 
taking the screen and attaching it to a retro product? Well, I honestly don't know because a lot of the screens in Apple devices and laptops, not even just Apple ones in general, generally are not compatible. They're not plug and play. They use specialized pinouts. So unless you read otherwise that you can do it easily, I would highly suggest you just go out and buy a screen uh, from Adafruit or one of those places, maybe eBay, an HDMI screen or something, and just uh, go that route. Probably a lot less headaches. And I don't know if you could separate the glass from the LCD on the iPads. They're not laminated, I don't think, but I don't think that's going to be a fun job either way. So I would, I would, uh, I would make that easier on yourself and just spend the, the fifty dollars or so on a on a screen. More dust on here. Ah. Oh, this fan is disgusting. I'm getting dust all over myself. Ah. No matter if you close your eyes, you get dust in your eyes anyway. So, hope you're enjoying this, everybody. I'm not. There's dust everywhere. I was trying to paint happy little trees. There's just dust. I should just be doing this outside. That's what I should be doing. All right, great. I uh, can't check the email now, but obviously, but I will. I will get to it. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> Let's. Uh, Put this back on so now we know that it goes in on an angle here thank you bruce get all those cables away i am doing a great job <laughs> i hope you're not being sarcastic Katie. <laughs> oh boy Oh, I forgot to put the screw back on the motherboard. See, David, you jinxed me. <laughs> You're doing a great job. You forgot that screw, by the way. You're doing great, though. You're doing fine. Ah. Always drop the screw. <laughs> uh, it did not come with a hard drive, unfortunately. So that, that is a bit of a an annoyance. Uh, at least I didn't pay $50 for it without a hard drive. Now, yes, the hard drive probably wouldn't have worked, but still. Screws are optional. I, I always leave screws on my desk and then I lose them. And I'm like, what machine was this for? Oops. So happy to put all the screws back. So I do not lose them. I'm going to put all this back together and then the thing won't boot. And then everyone will be, be like, ha, he wasted his time. <laughs> yeah, that smoke's normal. I'll just buff right out. The burn marks on those capacitors, yeah, you're good. This one screw just does not want to go in. Ah. Really? Come on. So you have to push this whole thing a little bit forward <laughs> just to make it fit. No, oh, come on. There we go. Uh, the caps look okay. I'll probably have to recap this board eventually. Oh, it's dust all over my legs here. Okay. Ugh, there's dust all over this. There's dust everywhere. Oh, I didn't even. I didn't even look at this poor floppy drive. Because we're actually probably going to need to. Uh, to. Steven, you should keep a Phillips screwdriver by your darn desk at all times. This is just ridiculous. Ah. Where is that screwdriver? It's upstairs. I know exactly where it is. I'll be right back. Let me go grab that screwdriver. I have to get the screwdriver. I'll be right back. Here's a fancy screen.
Wasn't that exciting? Very exciting. Oh, it's an Apple II GS. It's close enough to a Mac. Had better colors and colors and sound before the Mac did, to be honest. Okay. Um, yes, they are not tantalums. Um, what's your technique for moving capacitors? Well, I stole my technique from the very smarter than I am, uh, Brankus Creations Bruce Rain, from uh, his YouTube videos using a uh, SMD re rework station. This little thingy here is about 50 bucks off eBay. Not the fanciest, but it gets the job done. I use uh, the hot air gun to remove the capacitors. Bruce, if you want to uh, paste in your video there, Bruce has an excellent video on doing just that. And I suggest you follow that. So we got my screwdriver here. Got that uh, screw out, because I want to take this drive out and just, uh, ugh, more dust. You can actually see how dusty this is because <laughs> there is a, a dust pattern here from where, where the drive used to be. How about that? Yeah. Ah, uh, yeah, that uh, that Apple II GS needs a new reefer cap. I'll tell you what. All right, so the bottom of the case said March 7th. The top of the case says March 14th. So these are obviously just stamped metal parts that Apple took and used whenever. Ugh. Blah. Blah. Dust, dust, dust. Yum. Delicious. Delicious. 1995. Um skin particles in my nose what was i doing in 1995 not this that's for sure i was probably playing on a 7100 my my father got one from his office they always he was in graphic design they always need the latest and greatest so when it came to the old machines they didn't really care for them and uh, he got to take one home or liberate them i don't know if it was official or not so <laughs> oops the statues of limitations are hopefully long gone by now oh yeah, as dust doing everywhere. You saw that little guy flying around. Oh boy. Yeah, if you want, if anyone's interested in buying dust, have a wholesale price. You come down here, I'll make you a deal. How about that? Oh my goodness. Yeah, there's a a good amount in there. Yeah, that probably won't work, but whatever. We're not gonna spend 80 hours doing a, a dust clean here. No, no, no. What is this? A Mac 84 stream? You have to be straight and to the point. All right. Put the floppy drive back in. Put the cable right there. Put the CD drive back where it belongs. There we go. Plug in our SCSI cable there. And plug in our very important audio CD drive cable because of course we will be listening to the finest finest audio CDs on this mono speakered Power Mac 60 uh, 7100 here <laughs> they will bite me <laughs> like what the hell are you doing there's dust in here all right there we go put the little cable in here this is for the fan just reconnecting the fan uh, plugging power into our CD-ROM drive there there we go now I'm gonna boot this without the um, without the Sonnet upgrade, just because uh, I want to get a system on there before we plug that in. Because if it's like most of the Sonnet cards, you do need some sort of driver, especially on the earlier ones. So I'm just getting some dust out of the the uh, power supply here. Not doing a terribly good job, but. Better than nothing. Ugh. <clears throat> I'm gonna I'm gonna need some uh I need to take a shower after this or something. Jeez. Alright. Let's put the power supply back in there. Get all those wires out of the way. So we can actually fit in. There we go. Alright, power supply is back in. Usually install an extension to enable the cache on the card. Yes, and we do have uh uh, if we uh, get our dust here, there's now dust on the board. Uh, we do have a ROM sim in here. We do not have a cache sim, so uh, no built-in cache to the computer, but the processor upgrade card will take care of that. Now, we do have this piece of plastic. I am not going to put this back in the machine. Well, 
I mean, this thing has been bent already. Do I really want to... Do I really want to risk it? <laughs> Collector's dust. There's a fine market for the dust there these days. You know, I'm just going to... I'm just going to let it rep. No, it's a bad idea. Yeah, I'm not going to put it all the way in. It'll, it'll, yeah, no, can't hang out. All right, we'll put it back. We'll put it back. Don't snap, don't snap, don't snap. Hey, it didn't snap. How about that? <laughs> I'm making you work. Oh, boy. Sorry. That's not my intention for anybody. No, thank you. It's a Sunday night. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm working. I'm working on this. I'm just getting a quick dust off of this lovely Super Mac card, which hopefully will work at least limited without dri whoop, what did I press? Without drivers here. Um, because I do not want to deal with the HDI 47, uh, 45 adapter or whatever. Alright, so we're going to put this back in here properly. There we go. Alright, we got our video card there. Uh, this is a Super Mac video card. It does not have a model name on it, but it's a Super Mac video card from 1991. So, should be pretty cool. Should be pretty good. All right. Um, what else? What else? What else? We have a big long screw in the back for the power supply. We will put that in. Oh, almost got a, a bleeder there. I'll put that back in so I do not lose it. This sounds about right. We've been going for an hour and we haven't even turned the machine on. So. Welcome to another Mac 84 live stream, guys. Smash that like button. Is that good enough impression, Bruce? Probably not. Probably not. All right. What do you guys think? Think we're ready to turn this on? No. All right. We're going to do it anyway. So we have our Sonic card removed. Okay, and uh, gonna go test cards. Oop, got a good reflection from my bald spot there. All right, we are going to test this. Yay! Um, <laughs> all right, what I'm gonna do is uh, go to our capture thingy here. So we should, hopefully, maybe get a picture on this thing. Where's that? Uh, where's my handy uh, adapter here? Hopefully this adapter works. Hopefully. It has to work now. We removed all the poisonous dust. <laughs> Thank you, Bruce. Eep. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bruce, for the super chat. That is very kind of you. <laughs> Smash that like button. That sort of sounded like an old man there. That was a little weird. <laughs> David's like, eh, there's not enough dusty cleaned out. Only 60-40 chance it'll work. <laughs> Well, there has to be a reason why they pulled out the hard drive. I'm going to hope that that was just because they got a new machine. And that was that. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Are you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I am very much ready. I'm bone ready. All right. Let's uh, make sure this uh, capture box is doing what it's supposed to do. Maybe. Oop, I'm dropping screws already. Uh, hold on a second. Let me make sure this is actually plugged in here before I go doing this thing. Uh, capture VGA, yes. Uh, capture device, USB 3. All right, so I should be seeing a menu button on here. I am. I'm not. But you know what? We're going to try anyway. Maybe it's just being finicky. All right. Power's going in. <laughs> do what you got to do. Hey, Ken. You are you are here for the moment of glory here. Welcome to the chat, buddy. We are about to test <laughs> this uh, lovely 7100. 
Just realized I need a keyboard here, don't I? And uh, Ken has a good video coming out soon. I will not spoil it. Just suffice to say you should subscribe to his channel and take a look. He has some goodies coming out soon. I think you will enjoy. As I go digging for an ADB cable here. <laughs> no, no, no. We don't need any of your crazy Ken curse here, Ken. We have a Sonnet G3 upgrade card. Look at that. It's not purple, but I don't know why I'm showing it in the thumbnail view. But all right. Let's, uh, let's wink, wink. Let's uh, get this thing going. All right, moment of truth here. Three, two, one. That was a that was a bit of a dud, wasn't it? Hey, there we go. Uh, we actually got chime. Took took a little bit. Let's see if anything comes up on our capture device here. Maybe, maybe not. We are using a secondary video card here. Oh, wait, I see a, uh, I see a screen here. <laughs> Am I using the wrong VGA cable? Probably using the wrong VGA cable. <laughs> I'm using the wrong VGA cable because I'm a dork, but we do have video. Hold on, let's fix this here. Please stand by, technical difficulties. We do, uh, we do have some signs of life here. Hold on. Hold on. There we go. Hey, look at that. <laughs> we have a flashing question mark. It works. It works. And for those of you who missed the chime, that lovely early Power Mac startup chime. Let's put the microphone close and get some retro Macintosh ASMR here. Here's the startup chime. Ah, isn't that lovely? All right, so now we just we need to put a disc in here. See if we get this to boot up. All right, cool. <laughs> Thank you, David. No, we don't need a death chime, do we? All right, we'll do a death chime. Oh, that's right. Not on this model. There we go. I got it. <laughs> For those of you who missed that. <laughs> that is the lovely death chime of early Power Macintosh. Kaboom! Oh, boy. All right, let's see if we have a suitable disc. All right, we have a Super Mac logo that starts up. That's good. Don't worry, Tosh. That's what the rewind is for. Those are too early. Let's see. <laughs> 8.6 is too new. Tiger is way too new. It does sound so wrong. It does. All right, let's get a disc here so we can actually uh, get this going. Uh, where did I put my SCSI 2 SD adapter? I think it's still in the LC behind me. It is. Let me go get that. I wonder if this uh, has an OS that's already good. So we'll see that. Let's just turn this off here. We'll plug in. SCSI to SD adapter and uh, let's put something under it so none of the none of the metal makes any contact with anything uh, what do I got what do I got what do I got I got nothing um, okay how about as he scans the horizon what the heck can I put under there here we go the good old rotten meat flux of the early days will be our little stand in there. All right, let's try this again. Ah, 
That's cool, Scarlet Swordfish. I have one of those. I don't know if it's an AV cord, though, because it doesn't have any AV inputs or anything. It's just a standard DB15 connector. But that was in one of my uh, 7100 cards. This is a PowerMax 7100. That is right, Tom. Okay. Any signs left from the SCSI 2SD adapter? May not have enough power here on the SCSI bus. Nope, we get a blink. Uh, let's see. You gonna do your thing? Huh? You gonna give us a blinkity blink blink? Or no? Let's see if the CD drive works. It does. Doesn't it? That's nice. Okay, no, no joy from the SCSI 2SD adapter. It could simply be an incompatible system on the card. We can try other cards. Actually got some 16 gig SD cards today. Let's give it a reboot here. Yeah, the badge says 66 megahertz. The, I'm sorry, the badge on the case says 66 megahertz. The board says 80, and then we have the Sonnet CPU upgrade card. So this machine's a bit of a, a mess, but that's okay. I am too sometimes, so we'll, we'll give it a break. Uh, does not seem to like it. Uh, let's try. Might be a SCSI conflict or something. Let's just try with the external SCSI cable. sure we don't puncture that uh, speaker on the front. Ah. <coughs> ah, geez, that dust is getting to me. Dust! Not the dust! We got a, we got a ding there. Got a good old ding. Uh, just a regular monitor output, okay. We've got 40 people here. Hello, everybody. We are trying to boot this 7100 from this SCSI 2SD adapter. <laughs> this may or may not work. I, uh, I'm curious if that SD card is even uh, appropriate for the system. Uh, I could not be lazy, and I could just plug it into my Mac Mini over here and find out. But where would the fun be in that? We're probably going to have to do that. <laughs> yeah, I could I could uh, boot from a CD. I usually have that uh, Universal Apple CD here. Uh, I think that is actually in the G4 tower over there. I think the G4 tower uh, is having firmware issues at the moment, but I could boot it up and eject the CD out. So let me go and grab that CD. Well, I found uh, every disc but the one I'm looking for. Let me check the stack over here. I always get excited when I see the yellow discs because I did have a set that were yellow. I have no idea where I put them, <laughs> but I did have a set. That's the important part. Uh, is it under here? No. Oh, Steven, when are you going to get your boot discs together? I don't know. It's a very good question. Well, we can easily make one if we have to. I have my Power Macintosh clone on the other side of the room. It's already booted up. Let me just put this little floppy disk in there. Got a nice orange disk here. Woo! And since uh, since we don't really have anything interesting going on uh, on the other side there, I'm going to change this really quick. Uh, back to this. 
Hey Matt, welcome to the party. We are just trying to get this thing to boot, and as always, I am not prepared. So I do not have a floppy or a CD ready, because I'm a big old dork, aren't I? Uh, so let me make a disc real quick. Um, probably the eighth, eighth millionth disc I've made in recent history. Uh, and uh, we will try and get this to do something. Okay, we are erasing a disc and we are formatting it with a boot floppy. So we'll at least be able to see if the amount of memory in the system and everything is okay. Why would you say something so angry about my little, my little 7100? It's okay. Yeah, I have this little uh, case here where I usually keep my, my discs here. Uh, and right now all I see are some Apple... Apple II stuff. I have my Tiger discs in here. I have my Panther discs in here. I have my early iMac discs in here. Uh, I do not see uh, my Apple Legacy disc, which I've made like a billion of. I'm sure there's one around here on one of the desks. I just don't know where it is right now. So uh, we're just going to make a boot CD real quick. Uh, a boot floppy, rather. That's what we're doing. <laughs> He'll be there a while if he has to do all the cats. As soon as I make this disc, I'll find it. Now, here's something interesting. So, I uh, am doing a... Uh, the floppy operation did not complete. Oh, of course it didn't. I'll get to that in a second. Um, so, I am recapping a logic board for the Macintosh Librarian. And uh, if you don't know about her channel, do a YouTube search for Macintosh Librarian and check it out. But as a little thank you, she sent me a little 3D print of her little Mackie character. Isn't that kind of her? And isn't he cute? Very adorable. A little 3D printed Macintosh Classic or Macintosh Classic 2. Isn't that nice? Very cool. So uh, thank you to uh, Kate, the Macintosh librarian, for uh, your, your little Mackie figure here. I will make sure he looks over the board as I recap it. And if there's any scary parts, I'll just cover his eyes. So he's gonna, he's been sitting here for a while during the stream and he will continue to do that. Can you turn your mic up? I think everybody else can hear me fine, but uh, let me know if you can't. All right, that disc failed. So let me get another disc and uh, I will be right back. Ah, oh, the fun of a live stream and not being prepared.
All right, we are making another disc. All right. Uh, I don't know where you get them. I, I think she just did a one-off print of them, but maybe she'll be uh, giving them away or something. I don't know if Kate's still here. We may we may have scared her off when we were when we were yelling at the computer. <laughs> oh boy. I really wish I had that darn CD here. That would just. I'm trying to think of what machine I was playing with last that I might have left the CD in the drive because. That's what always happens. As I as I kick the microphone, the microphone, the camera stand. That's always what happens. Always what happens. I always lose the disc, put it somewhere where I didn't know it was gonna be. All that fun stuff. Always what happens. Well, I the SCSI SD drive was fine. I, the the system on there might not be appropriate for this system. So that's. That's why it's not booting. I, I don't have a plethora of SCSI drives, unfortunately. I would I used to. They all died. <laughs> all right, so it's initializing and copying that floppy. The little Clarus the dog cow is doing her flips. There we go. Looks like that one worked. Let me pull that disc. There we go. I could do that, Dana, I suppose. All right. We got a floppy. I already copied it, Mike. I'm sorry. All right. Let's go back to our split screen here. Let's try that out. Let's hope this disk drive works. We got Happy Mac. Nah, are you kidding me? <laughs> oh, this startup disc will not work on this Macintosh. And there goes my G4 tower in a in a boot loop there because for some reason it wants to uh, update its firmware, and it's just going to keep on restarting in a loop. I have to find where I put that darn CD. It's probably right in front of me. Um, yeah. Well, I'm going to put this camera a little bit closer so I could sneak behind it and uh, see if the CD is over here because it's going to drive me crazy. Drive me crazy. an old CD. I have no idea if it works. It is worth a shot. Totally legitimate CD-ROM there. Yeah, that network disk was for System 7.5. It was supposed to be a universal network installer. <laughs> Who knows? The CD drive might not even work on this thing. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Come on. You don't like CD-ROMs that bud? Come on. What are you going to do? Are you going to boot or not? <laughs> CD is just a little dusty. Just a little bit. It could be that drive is caked with dust too. I called Joey Numbers. He'll uh, he'll get you a CD pronto. As you wish, Mike. There may be a scuzzy conflict here. That's that's going to be my guess. All right, stop doing your firmware beep over there, Power Mac. Or I'll come unplug you. 
Yeah, CD's not even spinning. Let me uh, unplug this SCSI 2SD adapter. Let's reboot. Hold down C. Did I plug the power? Yeah, I, the power's in there. Otherwise, it wouldn't have ejected. Come on, you SCSI. The drive has power because it has ejected. I don't know what kind of accent was that. Do not ask me. I do not know. CD drive could be toast. Wouldn't that be nice? Wouldn't that be nice? The man dusting this thing, I would not be surprised. And it just sucked itself back in. Isn't that cool? Well. We have a CD-ROM drive from a 8500. Let's see if that'll work. Why not? Why not? You put the CD drive in, it work. Maybe. Who knows? It's probably the same SCSI ID as the other drive. Oh, this is going to be fun. Uh, let's take out a jumper and just put it in a different spot. And let's hope that's enough. See, everyone who left the stream just knew what this was going to get into. And they were like, I, I'm out of here. This guy's crazy. He's not prepared. He's crazy. <laughs> Watch, this CD is probably not even burned correctly. It could be a possibility here. All right, now it's spinning. So I'm at the end, end of the SCSI chain here, so that may have helped. Well, I, I heard it move. I don't necessarily know if it's spinning. It's also a very slow drive, so it could be spinning, and I could just maybe couldn't hear it. Uh, the SCSI 2SD adapter does have termination turn on. It should, at least. It is unplugged now, so... Uh, we ain't getting nothing, are we? <laughs> no sad Mac, it's a good shot time. Uh, yeah, and there we go with the blinkity blink blink. Alright, I sh I'm doing what I should have done a while ago. I am checking uh, my uh, Mac Mini here. And we're going to see what the heck is on this SD card. So let me, let me do something here. Let me uh, make this window a little bit bigger. Maybe... Because uh, you looking at the blinkity blink question mark, whoopsie, is probably not too exciting. So let's let's do a uh, picture picture here, a little bit different. All right, so uh, try again, Christopher. <laughs> See a class of act. All right, uh, let's plug in the SD card. And uh, find our beautiful Kensington mouse in a box. I wouldn't be uh, the first time. Sign here. <laughs> oh boy. All right. Let's connect to the Mac that has that SD card plugged into it. I think it's the this one here. Did you turn off? Did you go to sleep, Mac Mini? What are you going to sleep for? We got work to do. Wake up. Wake up. That's right. You fell asleep. You little Mac Mini, you. Yes. The Kensington mouse in a box. When you need a mouse and you need it in a box, call Kensington. Let's try it again. <laughs> I will try not. To go too crazy with this let, let let's just be clear about that i i need to get to bed too i i can't stay up all night <laughs> yeah, let me go jump start my car this will be a while all right so we got it on the network yet maybe there we go we share the screen beepity boopity there we go all right so yeah this disc is uh should be okay. Now this disc 
was made for the uh, set-top box when I was playing around with that. So it does have System 7.6 on here. It does have a different enabler. So let me check my cheat sheet of system enablers here to see if uh, this requires one. It may, it may not. Uh, Power Macintosh 70, oops, it's, that spreadsheet is all wishy-washy. No, no, bad computer. It, th it thought an XLS spreadsheet file was a zip file. Oh, you poor thing. That, that's not what it is. All right, let's uh, let's find that. <laughs> let's let's try this a different way. Let me uh, just open this with. Uh, this is very exciting. You can't see what I'm doing. Uh, oh, you got to be kidding me! Come on. PowerPC Enabler version 1. Okay, Bruce. You got it. Anything for you. Alright, let's unstuff the System Enabler folder. Here, note to self. Convert that System Enabler uh, spreadsheet to one that's actually uh, not a fancy new one. So you actually read the darn thing. Uh, this is a Power Macintosh 7100, as you can see there. And uh, we are trying to get an operating system on the uh, SCSI 2 SD adapter to prove that this wants to, uh, to work here. So let's uh, let's try that. Let's move this about a little bit. All right, so we have our PowerPC enabler. Let me. Uh, just do a copy of this into here just in case just give me a moment here I'm just copying some uh, some things onto the SD card hopefully this will resolve the issue I am a little concerned about the termination here so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna turn this off I'm going to unplug this let me uh, get the screen back to uh, normal here I'm going to unplug the CD drives since we will not be using them. And uh, let's undo that SCSI cable there. Come on. There we go. Okay. All right. So if this all works, we should be okay. So let me drag over that system enabler now. Into our system folder. Just make sure I find the right spot. And I'm going to put it in the other drive too, just in case. Okay, and we're going to eject. Actually, let me check the. Uh, no, that'd be fine. Hopefully. All right, let's eject this SD card. Maybe. You want to? Come on. There we go. Yes, so that, that RAM chip guy Dana actually sent over. I have to put a link on that on my website. I also have that desktop background from that G4 tower I got to uh, copy off. I, I literally have not touched that machine since that stream, so my apologies on that. All right, I'm going to put this card into here. We are plugging the only thing. Uh, into here. There might be some dust there, so who knows. There we go. Alright. Let's see if this wants to work now. Maybe, yes, no? Come on, give us some something. We got a blink. One blink. Oh, we got multiple blinks. Hey, there we go. 
it was the system enabler all along. I don't know why I said that with the Brooklyn accent, but... And it's rebooting again! I hope that's a system enabler and not something else! Oh, boy. Please let it be the system enabler. All right, making uh, good progress now. Let's uh, go to Sonnet's website because we're gonna have to download some drivers. It occurs to me that I actually can't see what's going on on this screen uh, because I don't have this plugged into there. So let me uh, let me do something real quick. Let me let me try and download. Uh, Let's see, processor upgrades. I don't know which card this is. I'm gonna guess it's one of the Crescendo ones. Uh, no drivers. Crescendo Encore installer. There's no, there's no, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah, it's very weird that it's in black and white, but I'm using this Super Mac card, which has no acceleration. We'll get to the bottom of this. Um, we need we need to change that beep. And Kate, you're back. I was showing off a uh, little Mackie here before. People wanted to know where they could get this little guy. So I think he's the only reason this thing booted. So thank you. Thank you, buddy. Yes, yeah, so we'll probably just need to uh, change the settings here. All right, so let's uh, let's get the keyboard off the computer there. No, 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 we do not want to shut this down. Uh, it's very strange because I can't really see uh, on this screen, so I'm, I'm gonna have to just do a quick thing here. And uh, no, we don't want to see that. There we go. Now I can actually see. A little laggy on my end. All right, so it's booting from the set top box um, <clears throat> partition. That's fine. Uh, we could boot from the other one, but all right. Let's go to control panels. And we'll go to monitors. Let's get some colors here. Oh my goodness! Yeah, we got a uh, Super Mac identified display. How about that? All right. Let me move this out of the way so I can still see what I'm doing here. There we go. I got all sorts of crazy colors now. Um, do I have the system picker on here? No worries, Bruce. See you later. I will try and find out how to do some benchmarks. <laughs> Either now or at another time. But thanks for stopping by and thanks for the tip about the uh, system enabler. I thought I had system picker on here. I guess not. Well, well let's uh, let's see if I could change the startup disk. I don't want to really mess with the STB partition because that was when I was messing with that set top box. So let's see if he'll like the uh, the other partition here. <clears throat> Let me make some room on my desk for this keyboard. Let's move this machine over. All right. Get to see a boot in color. <laughs> That's nice, David.
right, so let's let's see. It seems to be booting to the other partition. That's good. See, Kate, you got you got a bunch of Mackie fans out there. <laughs> now I just need to think of something. Nobody wants a nobody wants a, a little thing of me. I love the Welcome to Macintosh document uh, documentary. Uh, I have the DVD of it somewhere. I think it's on YouTube too, but I have the DVD. No, nope, but. <laughs> It still started up from that partition. Uh, probably a SCSI 2SD uh, thing I have to uh, I have to fix. Nothing, nothing too crazy. I am trying. This this uh, pointing device is not cutting it. Let me get an actual mouse. I think I have to clean it or something because this this thingy is uh, a little bit unforgiving at times. Where did my mouse go? This should just be retitled the Mac 84 stream where he misplaces everything. Because that is exactly what is going on now. Oh boy. That's a good chime, the Quadra. <laughs> no worries, Mike. Yes, I will text you a picture of the specs of the card uh, when I get that working. Because that's the next thing. I'm just trying to find those Sonnet drivers. Uh, it won't be for here for too much longer. I don't want to go on forever. Um, of course, the mouse I found has a busted connector. That doesn't help. I just had a mouse on my desk. I was, I was messing with that uh, set-top box. Where did that go? Not like I don't have a dozen of them. I just don't know where they are. Oh, here's one right behind me. Let's hope this one works. It is dirty. Ugh. This one, this one needs a, uh, this one needs a good bath. Hey, it's Greg. Thank you very much for the super chat, there, buddy. I appreciate it. Eep. <laughs> there we go. We got, we got clicking there. Click. Clickety click click. Let's plug this mouse in. Do not hot swap your ADB devices unless you want it. All right, that's much better. Cool. All right, let's see what we're doing here. So it is still. Well, first off, we need to change some sounds here. Ah, oh, there we go. Eep. Perfect. Hey, Alex. Thank you for joining. You better be, Greg. Ah, nice calming blue. Where are those kittens? There we go. <laughs> that just screams 1990s Macintosh now, doesn't it? Uh, this is a Power Macintosh 7100. <laughs> In fact... Oh, it's gonna take you that long to close this thing? Well, I'm glad it's relaxing. Thank you. There we go. So, anybody new comes, they know. <laughs> oh boy. 
yeah, it's just a just a little mono speaker here, so it's uh, not not gonna give us the best eep here. Now, the thing that we got <laughs> cat centipede. <laughs> uh, a lot of these desktop patterns are not on Mac OS nine. I'm sure you could I'm sure you could find them though, and uh, and force them to be on. Um, so what I'm trying to do now is I'm trying to get the Sonic uh, drivers because this did have a Sonic card in there. So here is here is that Sonic card. Ooh, ah. Um, if you do a Google search for old Mac sounds, somebody has a uh, a uh, website that they they put them on. And if, if you go to my Big Sur video I did about the Macintosh sounds on YouTube, in the video description, I put a, uh, a little um, a link there to where I got the sounds from. Uh, most of them are in there. Um, so, yeah, let's... Uh, let's yes, Trina, I just mentioned that. You're probably getting your tea. I have not booted that machine up, so I have to, I have to do that. Uh, all right, so where the heck are we going to get the downloads here? Because I see no downloads on the Sonnet website. We're going to have to use the Wayback Machine, or right, let's just go to Macintosh Garden. They, they must be on there. Right, let's go to Macintosh Garden. Do a search for Sonnet, and we'll just place that on our SCSI to SD card. Uh, hopefully, that's it. Hopefully. All right, so we got uh, Sonnet uh, Crescendo One Four. See, I don't. There's a bunch of different things here. I don't see. I don't. It doesn't. I don't know which model of card this is. <laughs> yes, ignore Dana. <laughs> uh, video ready kit seventy one hundred eighty one hundred. Uh. There's a, there's a model. There's not a not even a model number on here. Uh, okay. Yeah, because there's there's a there's a Crescendo which looks awfully like this. Uh, there's the Crescendo L2, which I don't believe this is. I don't think this has the L2 cache. There's one for the 7200, which this is not. I'm gonna guess it's the Crescendo ones, but Macintosh Garden has a bunch of installers here. I just don't know for what. Download is some da 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 da. All right, well, let's just try this 2.3.1, I guess. I'm going to download all of them. Why not? They're small enough. Uh, but I will, I will try one of them here. So let's uh, shut this down so we can go ahead and... Uh, Okay. Okay. And um, let's put our our SD card back in our our desktop over here, and transfer over that these goodies. Let's let's do that. All right. So. Sorry, there's a lot of mouse clicking around here. Hold with me one moment. While we hopefully get all this Sonnet stuff over to the right spot. name is too long how dare it uh, have to rename the thing All right, hopefully that will work and of course that's gonna I need stuff it now
And of course, the Mac Mini is now doing its time machine backup, which is slowing everything down. Stop it! Stop it! This is exactly what always happens whenever I'm trying to do something. Let's hope that that works, because otherwise, I don't want to have to do this again. Eject all, please. Oh, what do you mean something is open? Nothing is open. It won't let me eject it, because something is open. What's open? Nothing. Bupkis. Bupkis. Yeah. Alright, let's try it again. We got our SCSI to a SD adapter. We got our SD card. Plug it in. Let's give it a go. Uh, I, I had a, I have a 180. I think I have a broken 170, I think. I think. Alright, let's see if that'll help me out here. Okay, we're, we're booting. All right, so this is without the Sonic card, of course. We just have a 66 megahertz PowerPC 601 chip in here. I have no idea the speed of that Sonic chip. <laughs> we are not going to keep rebuilding the desktop on this. I don't know why you keep insisting on it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Where did I put these goodies? So we need stuff it. Please let this version work. <laughs> I pressed the wrong key on the keyboard. Oh boy. All right, let's say uh, doop 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 doop. So let's do one of these guys. Everybody, no looky, don't don't cheat off my answers. Uh, I actually have a uh, MacBook, but by the way this stream is going, I don't think we're getting there. Uh, that MacBook, uh, yeah, that MacBook is a uh, 2011 uh, MacBook Pro 2.4 gigahertz uh, model, and uh, I'll show it in a little bit if if this doesn't go too long. Yes, Chris, I memorized that, but it was secretly on this screen. <laughs> I'm not that good. So while while this. Uh, does its reboot dance. I'll talk a little bit about the MacBook. Yeah, if I could, if I could reach it. There we go. So this guy right here. It's a 13-inch. Late 2011, 2.4 gigahertz MacBook Pro. Pretty good condition. Uh, I picked it up for $25. The reason I picked it up that cheap is the S key had fallen off. And they tried to put it on upside down. Which you could try and do with an S key, but it's not going to stay on. So I was able to fix that relatively quickly. Uh, also, the hard drive was dead. And by dead, I mean the OS got corrupted. So I actually just reinstalled High Sierra on there. Thing works fine. Four gigabytes of memory. Uh, I'm going to try and max that out. Believe it or not, my current MacBook is a 2008 MacBook Pro unibody. Uh, that's the laptop I've been using for all these years. I have a work laptop that's a 2015. Uh, so that that's sort of been able to, to you know, get me some uh, mobile computing when I need to. But I really don't like using my work laptop for non-work things. So 
I'm very happy uh, to have this. I did pick up years ago, uh, not years, maybe a, a year ago, I picked up a MacBook Pro for free. It was a 2011, but the uh, had no bottom case, had no hard drive cable, uh, needed a fan. So I had those parts, I just never got around to fixing it up, and now I got one that all works. So how about that? Uh, battery works too. Uh, I actually bought an SSD for it today. Uh, so I'm going to put that in. So uh, is the 7100 better than the 7100? Uh, I'm sorry, better than the 6100. You bet it is. Uh, I actually bought a... Uh, it has more expansion ports and it's, uh, it's a lot of good things. So I actually got this, uh, this crucial uh, SSD for that MacBook. So I'm going to put this in, just a 500 gig one. It was on sale at Micro Center. Uh, I happened to be in that area where I picked up this and uh, picked that up. So uh, I'll install probably High Sierra on there. The thing will probably fly and uh, that'll be nice. And what's not flying is this installation. Oh boy. Uh, yes, Trina, it is an i5, so nothing too special. But, uh, nonetheless. Yeah, we'll see what this Sonic uh, card is. I'm very curious. <laughs> I'm very curious what this Sonic card actually has uh, in it. It's hopefully a G3 200, 300 megahertz, something like that. Way better than the Core 2 Duo that was in my, uh, in my MacBook. So that's good. So that is good. Oh, nice. Yeah, my, my wife's MacBook is actually much faster than mine. Well, I don't know about this current one, but she has a uh, MacBook Air 2017, something like that. That was a good deal. I picked that up for $400 not too, too long ago. 20, or, uh, summer of 2019. So very good price. Eight gigabytes of, of memory on that thing. Uh, had a, what they got, 256 SSD on it. Not too shabby. Perfect for what she needed. She was upgrading from a unibody Core 2 Duo laptop, 13 inch. So this is a 13 inch MacBook Air that, that works great for her. She hasn't had a problem with it. <laughs> this is just, whoo. Taking its sweet time. The power of uh, early Power Macintosh systems here. Oh boy. Yeah, actually that uh, that um, unibody MacBook had an SSD in there. It wasn't too bad. It actually ran High Sierra okay. Oh, here we go. Finally. Jeez. Yeah, we'll restart. After you took forever. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to install that uh, Sonnet software. Now we could unstuff that. And uh, then we'll put in the card, and then hopefully, hopefully that'll be it. Hopefully it'll work. I love that chime. Isn't that a great chime? Yeah, hopefully it does. I mean, the airs can get a little dirty and, and dusty, just the way their their fans are. Just a lot of with MacBooks are like that. It doesn't hurt to get one of those special screwdrivers, open up the bottom, just blow compressed air on it. Eep. Eep. <laughs> oh my goodness. Yeah, let's close out all this. Oops, why did that one open? All right, now, uh, let's try this one. <laughs> yeah, that sticky note was for everyone who was asking. <laughs> I really should have put something on the screen in OBS, but... There we are. There's the pretty computer. <laughs> no worries. It's not just you. <laughs> All right. So now we got an installer. Hopefully this is the right version. I have no idea. 
Software for your chronic, uh, Sonic Crescendo. I almost said Chronic. Uh, <laughs> Encore processor upgrade cards. Continue. There we go. Okay. Updated May 2015. What the? What? Well. I, uh. <laughs> I, I hope this will work. Add support for G4 ROMs, okay. Well, this better support this, because I don't know what else to do. Yep. One moment, please. Installing Nostalgia. Please wait. Alright, we'll reboot. Actually, yeah, let's reboot, and then I'll install the card. I'm very eager to see what speed this card is. Very eager. Video adapter kit ready. Well, that'll work on a 6100 because you'll put this card in there and then you'll have a card coming out of here. If you try and put a video card into this machine, it's just going to slam right into the power supply. This is a PowerPC G3 upgrade card by Sonnet. So this is the actual PowerPC upgrade card. We're going to be installing that in a second. That's why I had to do install that software. <laughs> why do you keep rebuilding you? Stop. Oh, boy. Eep, beep, beep. A G3! Alright, Mike. Here's the moment of truth. We are about to uh, about to shut this down and put the card in. Uh, no, I did not, Dana. Shoot, I'm gonna guess this is an 80 though, because that's what the sticker on the board says. All right, let's uh, put this card in. All right, it's in. Let's boot her up. It's a chime. That's a good sign. Well, the rebuild happens. Yeah, it could it could happen just because it's not saving things, but that that's a good point. <laughs> it always eeps in anger, but maybe with the the processor upgrade, <laughs> it actually won't take forever to start the the, the rebuilding. Who knows? You know what, Mike? You are absolutely correct. <laughs> the only more useless would be the uh, <laughs> would be the uh, sixty one hundred. Ah, there we go. Simply fast. Let's see how fast it takes to open up stickies. <laughs> well, that's good. That means it recognized the G3 card, which is excellent. I right, place your bets how fast the uh, the G3 card is. No, I'm not going to let you do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Boom! There goes stickies. <laughs> Mike is back because he heard the wild eep. It woke him up. All right, let's see. Let's see how fast this card is. I'm going to guess 200 megahertz, something like that. Calculating, calculating. 220. There we go. 220 megahertz. Mike could now go to sleep. Not bad at all. 220 megahertz. We could install Jaguar on here. No, we probably can't. Probably a very, very bad idea. Wow. Wow. Look at that. Look at look at that. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. <laughs> Let's empty the trash. Yeah, good old good old uh, 40 megahertz uh, bus speed here. Is there an Apple system profile? Yes, there is. Simply fast. Yes, this does recognize itself as a 7100/80. So the case be damned, the board in here is actually a 7180, not a 7166. Uh, memory installed is 88 megabytes, which is great. Uh, PowerPC enabler 1.1.1, and system 7.6. How about that? 
Sweet. All right. Well, we got got that. I saw Greg. I don't know why you're you're telling me that here. You, you I saw it in the chat, and I told you, I want that iPad. You won't got tease me again. That's that's mean of you. Uh oh. Did I freeze the machine? See, I was giving Greg smack, and I froze the machine by trying to open the disc that had not had its rebuilding done. Oh boy. Yeah. This this guy got frozen. Oopsies. Sorry, Greg. Greg put a hex on me and, and froze the machine. Reboots. We reboot it. I froze it. Let's let's let that uh, desktop rebuild. Would you say a SCSI would be faster than PCI to SATA in a G4? Um, depends on the disk you're using, honestly. <laughs> oh, Nick. Nick, if you if you watch my unboxing video of uh, of the Performa 400 something, one of those Performas, uh, <laughs> there is there is some guy that went on a rant about those teleport modems. I think it was a bronze modem, but uh, yeah, those aren't really the best. I mean, they're dial-up modems, and go go have a ball with it, but don't expect anything fast. All right, let's wait for this to rebuild the desktop. Hello, MacBoy 8191C, SI, something like that. Sorry, I'm bad with names. <laughs> well, that rebuilt fast. <laughs> now let's see if I double click on it. Is it going to freeze the machine? It does not. Yay. Okay. Yeah, here's, here's my, uh, here's all my stuff here. Excellent, excellent, excellent. All right. Well, that's not bad, Nick. Not bad at all. Alright, cool. Right. Uh, we got some Apple software here. This is actually the whole uh, Apple Legacy disk here. Um, what is this? System 7.6? It's upgrade. We're upgrading to 7.6.1. Let's do that, huh? A disk error occurred. Well, how does that happen? <laughs> oh boy. Sometimes uh, this CD that I copied this from has some bad aliases. Yeah, the GPU is a Super Mac card. I don't think we have the accelerator stuff installed in it. It may not even need it, but. Um, there we go. Net install, baby! Yeah, Nick, I did a video on the Sega Dreamcast and something called Dream Pi with the Raspberry Pi uh, and modifying a 9-volt battery and a phone line to give you the proper uh, voltage uh, the phone modems expect and all that stuff. I suggest taking a look on that if you're trying to do anything with dial-up uh, without an actual phone line. And what happened here? Did, did you mount those discs or not? What are you, what are you doing? What are you doing? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, I'm not doing that. Oh, of course there's a problem with the disc. Well, that's great. So, well, we can't update the 7.1, I guess. Um, that's okay, I guess. Suppose. Suppose. Yeah. Just for fun. What Apple software we got on here? 2E card. Printer tool, Apple Vision, desktop printing, all sorts of goodies. No worries, Christopher. See you later. Yeah, I'm not going to go too much longer. I said that like an hour ago, didn't I? Uh, we've been streaming for two hours and eight minutes. Uh, I am going to see. I'm going to look at this computer here. That's uh, this one to my left. I'm going to see if I could find uh, Super Mac card drivers. I think I, think I saw some. Let me see if uh, might not be anything be needed for this. But you never know. You never know. Drivers for Super Mac video cards. Sweet. That's what we need. I think I downloaded this already. I did because it's showing up as a duplicate in my downloads folder. All right, so let's shut this down. And let me just remove the SD card. 
do our SD card dance again. Because I did not set this up to be networked, so yeah. Just drag that over. Oh, come on. Just, just. Okay. All right. Let's see if that wants to do it. Again, chime. Uh, Photoshop one should run fine on this. Actually, more than enough. Uh, Prodigy, I believe, was like an AOL CompuServe type thing, like an eWorld type thing. One of those America Online all-in-one type network um, internet service packages thingies. Hey, raw elements, that would be pretty cool. Yeah, old internet service provider software. So, uh, you probably won't get anywhere with just that. You probably need an internet browser separately. Now, this actually has a networking uh, card on it, which is nice. We're not going to go online or anything today. Much too crazy to do that at this late time. Uh, yes, rebuild if you must. Anybody have any questions about this computer or anything else? Uh, not wrapping up just yet, but we're getting to that point. Eep. Eep. Oh, you know what I just noticed? That's pretty cool. On the motherboard here, I'll just do a swap in uh, OBS real quick. On the motherboard here, I noticed we have a little uh, design thing. Designed by Zenon Kuk. C-U-K-U-C. Uh, and uh, Sandy... Heiser. How about that? Pretty neat. Pretty neat. All right. Tripod. Back on there. This is the Power Macintosh 7100 with a Sonnet upgrade card in it. Woohoo! All right. Let's try and get this Super Mac video card here. Oopsie. I clicked the wrong button again. Sorry. Oh, I would, I would love some more subscribers, right? I think everybody who's watching is a subscriber, so I don't think that'll help. But <laughs> it doesn't have the same smell as 6100. You know what? Probably, it probably does. Sure, it could run Crisis if you have an AV card and you're playing Crisis on a PC with composite video out, and you use that video out to go into here. And what is, what is, what going on, stuff? Are you no like? You no like my Super Mac here? What's going on? Ah. Ugh, don't tell me that's like a, a too newer version of Stuff It. That's the only thing that irks me about like downloading stuff from these websites. It's not the website's fault, but some people just don't unstuff things or stuff them correctly and they'll they'll use like stuff it version 16 to uh to stuff something and then all of a sudden kablamo you can't unstuff it with the recent version of stuff it expanded so we have to do the shutdown dance again uh this is a power mac the 2vx and 2vi are not power macintoshes so technically this is faster At least one would hope.
Copying a whopping six megabytes to here. I would say the Power Mac G5 is much more capable. Now, don't get me wrong. I like the iMac G4. Nice machine. Power Mac G5. Put whatever graphics card in you please. And it probably won't get as, as uh, stuffy in there as the G4 iMac. Now, I love the G4 iMac LCD as an all-in-one. Very nice machine. More power, obviously, in the G5 there. And you probably get the G5 for a dime a dozen these days. Nobody wants them. They look like a Mac Pro. People get mistaken with them. Put Linux on there. Yep, just like Jacob is saying. Probably be a, a good machine to do it with. Yeah, the G4s are beautiful machines. I, I have a few of them. I love the little speakers that uh, you can put, plug into them. Little Pro speakers, but... All right, hopefully this is one of the last times we boot this thing up. Yeah, I have a 7600, I have 7500s, I have a 7200s, I have a 7300, I have a 7100. I think I have all of them. <laughs> this blasted desktop. See you, Scarlet Swordfish. Thanks. Eep. Eep. Load those stickies. Load them. Uh, this is a SCSI 2SD uh, version 5, I believe. 5 boot up 1, something like that. Okay. Now, I have no idea <laughs> what graphics card this is. This is not going to help me, is it? Um, is there any identifier on this card? It just says 1991. Oh, that's a, that's a, it's a partition on there uh, that just does not seem to like, uh, like to, like to have itself working. Um, I'm going to have a heck of a time getting this to, to understand what card this is, aren't I? Uh, super video? Read me. Let's see. Using the graphics card. Well, either it works or it don't. That's, uh... <laughs> that's, that's gonna be, uh... That's gonna be the, 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 the summary of this, isn't it? Okay. I wonder if, uh... I doubt it's going to tell me in Profiler. Yeah, I mean, the old hard drives in those are, are going to be slow too, but yeah, I, I know what you mean. Uh, da, ba, da, ba, da, ba, da. Oh, it's because the ID number three, okay. I'll show it off. Yeah, it does not tell me. Let's see. Let's go to device information. Maybe this will tell me. Nope. There's not really a sticker on the card, unfortunately. Yeah, that's not really going to help me out here. Um, Super Mac 3.1 Thunder Spectrum Series ROMs. Yeah, I don't think... Super Power 1 version enables Super Mac graphics on Power Mac. All right, let's 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 try 1.1. Let's just see that. So this is a system extension. Maybe that's all we need? I don't know. It'll probably break it, but what else are we going to do? Oops. Didn't want to do that. Put you back there, and we're going to copy. Yes, we're going to put that away. Thank you. I hope that's all we need to put in there. Well, there's only one way to find out. Let's see if it bombs. Honestly, for 25 bucks, the Nubus card and the 
obviously the CPU card alone is, is worth this, so. I'm a happy camper. Let's see if that extension loads without a big X through it. All right, we have a, uh, we do have the extension loaded up. Not that it's probably going to do much without a control panel or anything. <laughs> Play Quake on it. Well, maybe another day. A guy can only take so much punishment in one day. At least this rebuilds fast. If I didn't have the CPU upgraded, it would take forever, I'm sure. Yep. If I set the time correctly, it probably will keep it during reboots, hopefully. It ain't 1956. Hey, you get almost, almost there. I could do. I mean, this is a Power Macintosh. I could, I could put a lot of programs and stuff on here. I, I just don't have access to any discs or anything that are, are that are, uh, uh, you know. Oh yeah, I am setting it to 1920. I don't have the uh, set date thing uh, set here. Oopsie doodle. Yeah, I forgot to put the set date thing on here. We'll just set yourselves to 2019. How about that? There you go. Yeah, I have to. I have to. I actually uh, contacted the developer uh, and was asking him a few questions about that. So uh, I wanted to do a video on that. I was going to do a video of that back in January. We all know what happened. I didn't do a video on it. All right. Well. The video card seems to work. Um, <laughs> I don't know uh, what else to uh, to do to test it. Uh, super view. I have no idea what that is. Video card drivers. Video spin. Oh, that's like a video capture card. See, these this are all like capture card. That 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 stuff is all capture card stuff. Um, duh. Is control panels. Maybe, uh, uh, oh, maybe this will tell us, oh, slot C, a Spectrum 24 IV, maybe, yeah, that looks right, alright, so now we know what card we have, we do, uh, we have a, uh, Spectrum 24 4, I guess, no idea what that, that, that do, um, what are these? Enable uh, zooming. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it's an Apple 13 inch RGB. Why not? Accelerator off. Okay, I guess, guess we can't turn that on. Or maybe it's already on. Yeah, I'll, I'll probably. Oopsie. Don't freeze. Right. Let's. Uh, I wonder if this control panel works. Nope. <laughs> Uh, let's try a later one. Alright, so let me, let me, this one seems to be okay. Let me drag this to our system folder. I think it's four megabytes of video memory. We will, we will see in a moment. That's, that's a heck of a lot of video memory. Uh, yeah, so Timbuk2 is a remote desktop uh, piece of software. So I was testing this SCSI 2SD SD card in an Apple set-top box, if you saw my previous live stream. And uh, that is basically an, an LC-type computer, but without uh, any working video drivers. So to actually see if the thing was working, I set up a remote desktop-type situation on there. And it does work. Um, so I, I left it installed, and that's the same SD card I'm using here. So uh, yeah, that's why uh, that's why Timbuk2 is there, and it does work great. Um, I just I'm not using that right now, and if uh, it'll, leave, it'll even work uh, off of the old uh, Apple Local Talk network. So even if you don't have Ethernet, you just have the old serial cables, uh, you can actually remote desktop, which is pretty neat. It's a little sluggish, <laughs> it freezes sometimes, but Yeah. 
Yes, it is, Dana. Yes, it is. All right. So, um. Oh, okay. Accelerator is on. Now we have the control panel actually installed. No idea what caps lock switch is. <laughs> what does that do? Does it tell me when the caps lock is on? It's been wonky like that since I installed it, but <laughs> I don't know what the caps lock switch does, to be honest. We don't need no stinking disc for a stage. Oh, and it froze. <laughs> oh, I put I pushed caps lock one too many times, didn't I? Reboot. <laughs> that caps lock hole for all I know was like an on-off toggle. I'm <laughs> just slapping it like crazy. Oopsie. I mean, to be honest, it's it's only been freezing when I've been messing around with extensions and stuff that may not be 100% compatible with this card. So... Who knows? Yeah, I mean, the early Paramax... I don't know. A lot can be said about them and their stability. <laughs> Do I even have disk first aid on here? Well, I, I must in the utilities folder here. And if it's not there, which it ain't. Oh, there it is. Ah. Here we go. Oh. <laughs> oh, come on, man. <laughs> I can't. Well, Dana, that's a big negative. So, sorry. All right, let's just go back and see if we could see how much video memory is on this card. And that's a big no. It's a big no. I can't even click. I can't even click. It's frozen. It's, it's, oh my gosh. Wow. I think that is, a, that is a sign. If I've ever seen a sign in my life, I think that's a sign to stop messing this machine. Because, I, yeah, it could be dust in one of the memory slots. It just could be bad RAM. It could be a lot of things. Oh boy, we're rebooting this one more time, and then I'm going to go to bed, because it's almost midnight here. <laughs> See how hot this card is getting. Not, not too warm, actually. The G3 card is not getting too warm. But hey, I mean, I'm surprised this thing uh, works pretty well. Floppy drive works too, I think. Oh, but I'm feeling tired. I've been, I've been busy as a bee all day. <laughs> While I would normally go for three hours, four hours, not on a Sunday night. I gotta wake up for work tomorrow. Uh, yes, you go rebuild yourself. Rebuild yourself as many times as you want. It's not going to make any difference. But if you believe in yourself, why not? I think I answered that question before, Nick. Yes. Not a place I really want to go. But I've been there before. There's an aquarium there. Alright. 
Anything useful in applications? Copy ROM. Yeah, it's copy our ROM. Let's get an authentic 7100 ROM to use in emulation. I bet you this will freeze this stupid machine. <laughs> you, we, are, we are both responsible adults. How about that? <laughs> what are you copying? What is this right on the desktop? Well, unless it's in a different partition. Is that ROM file that big? Or is this computer that slow? Or is this SCSI 2SD adapter that slow? Let's find out. Four megs! Really? Took you that long for... Oh, jeez. All right. Um, it's a Power Mac. It's a low-end Power Mac, a 6200 CD. It's low-end Power Mac. I'll look up everymac.com. That They'll give you all the specs. Honestly, I, I don't know. It depends on what you're going to use it for. I, I wouldn't, it, does, it doesn't really have all the expandability of, a, of the Power Macs. So if you really want a good Power Mac, get like a, a I don't know, a 9600, 9500 even, 8500. Yeah, so that's, that's about it, I guess. Uh, I don't know what else I should do on this thing. Could do a puzzle. Uh, their website is... Uh, you have to click on the expand uh, drop-down menu for their specs sometimes. But they're pretty accurate. I'm going to do the puzzle. Yay! How about that? You could actually put pictures in this puzzle, but... I don't got that. Uh, Apple Talk. <laughs> okay. Cool. A cool story. Uh, chooser? Ah, oh boy. Yeah, this, this is going well. We are... Do I dare? Do I dare? Oh, that's only a patch. Good. Because <laughs> I'm not... I'm not doing that this late. We're not getting into open transport territory. No siree. Although... I wonder why it worked on the other machine. And didn't work on this machine. Huh. Yeah. Huh. All right, well. Interesting. Um. Let me try something. Good night, sir. Madam, good night. We're, he's gonna do it. He's gonna do the crazy thing. Oh boy. Welcome. Oopsie, I pushed the wrong one. No, not the floppy. We ain't putting it on there. I'm not that crazy. Alright, we want some uh, networking and connectivity, eh? There we go. Oh, we don't need all that stuff. What is this? Yeah, we don't, we don't got no PCI here. So that, that's a big negative. I don't think, no. No, no. Oh, what are these, what are these tools? Communications toolbox, okie dokie. Yay, 
Yeah, let's just go ahead and do it. Are you kidding? Well then. Let's solve this. You go over there. I think it was like, ooh, $2,400, something like that. I, I was just reading about the specs of it because the Macintosh clone video kind of ties into that time frame, so. <laughs> A lousy seven megs. Twenty nine hundred wing langs. Oh my. Yeah, and that was for the original sixty six megahertz version, probably. I don't even know if I have a sixty six megahertz model because this one is an eighty megahertz, but the case says sixty six. That's fine with me. I'll, I just needed it to say sixty six for a video I was doing, but it's a lot of monies, a lot of monies. At least you got uh, three new bus slots and a PDS slot for it. This thing actually cleaned up pretty nice. So. You're, you're just buying Max left and right, huh, Nick? Did that include shipping? <laughs> 7200's nice. I have a uh, work group server 7200. Wait, what was I doing? Uh, trash that. That's what I was going to do. All right, now we got we got a whole 25 megabytes available. That should appease the installation gods. Hopefully. Famous last words. Okie dokie. Printing. We better have an image writer. There we go. I hope it overwrites that rogue Apple Talk control panel in my control panels folder. <laughs> Otherwise, we may run into some problems here. Well, Nick, I, I hope that uh, that does not... <laughs> that is very flattering. <laughs> but but I, I hope you have a good enough space for these things. And I hope you enjoy them. That's, that's all that matters. If your significant other gets angry, it's not my fault. <laughs> but no, these old, these old machines are great. I love, I love messing around with these things. I don't know why you can only see my hand. Well, I know why, but... But no, these, these old machines are great. I love messing around with them. Now, now you just need to build a, a big network of them. That's not too bad, honestly, for a 7200. I hope it survives shipping. Those plastics can be a bit uh, brittle these days, but I'll keep my fingers crossed for you. All right, I just want to see if the Apple Talk thing works, and then, then I'm going to probably end the stream here. We're almost at three hours. That's a bit much. I got to go to bed soon. It's almost midnight. Cue the rebuild desktop. And cue the date and time is incorrect. Oh, don't worry, Mac boy. We're, we're going to wrap up here in a minute. Hopefully. Eight hours later. I could have installed High Sierra on that MacBook right now. Could have been doing if I did two things at once, the stream would have taken five times longer though. So probably a good idea I didn't do that. Ah, 
Ah, that is true. That's very true. I didn't shut it down. I just rebooted it. What was I doing? That's right. Choose it. Don't freeze, please. All right, Apple Talk is active. But on which port? The printer port? No, no, no. We want the modem port. If all went well, we should... Eep. Eep. We should be able to see our power computing friend on the other side of the room. Ah, if, yes, it will print... First off, congrats, it's an awesome printer. Yes, it does print weird stuff because it sends out signals on boot up. So just leave the printer off until you're ready to print to it. And look, there is our Power Center Pro. We're connecting to it. Good old local talk. Speeds of up to 250 kilobytes per second or something like that. I don't know. Ooh, we got Print Shop Deluxe. That's not going to take for 20 megabytes. That won't take forever at all. He says sarcastically. We'll have you. Yoink. <laughs> Print shop installer 340 megs. Eh, hey, you no know, thank you. Yeah, those image writers. I am I'm blessed to have five of them in my collection. Oh boy. I love those things. I think it's just traumatic because we got rid of the first one that we had. You have all three. I think I, out of all the ones I have, I think I have all the, the same ones. Let's just tease ourselves here. I I have all of the first revision, I think. <laughs> See, Dana, you don't even have to say it. You could just allude to it. <laughs> you got to be cracking up. Oh, turn this thing around. Yeah, I'm not waiting that long. We're stopping this. Yeah, my father had a, uh, a 2CX and uh, got a uh, an image writer as the first family printer. Oh, this is this is a uh, good hard drive software. We will copy that over. Oh, Apple 2C. I'm sorry. I'm thinking of the Mac. This is late, so I'm getting confused here. But. Uh, very cool. Yeah, the, the, a few of them came in a slightly different color. I have the I have one image writer, and then I have uh, five image writer twos. I think I'm, there might be another one hiding away somewhere. All right, I think that's uh, that's gonna do it. Uh, actually, let's let's grab over. Uh, we have uh, utilities here. There we go. Let's copy over disk first aid. Because it was not on the system for whatever reason. Cool. Alright. Sweet. Alrighty. So. Here we go. Oh, you know what? Uh, just for funsies copy the ROM over definitely pick that up the reason the, the minute somebody looks at that and goes oh I don't need that anymore they're going to throw it out <laughs> so go, go get that raw elements and send me a picture when you do this is only 4 megabytes Four. <laughs> well, that's a good deal sign here. You know what? I I there there's a guy in Florida selling like a bunch of Bernoulli drives. He so this guy had a bunch of Mac stuff for sale. He bought the entire lot for a few thousand, I think, and um, and now he's selling all the things piecemeal. But they're so heavy to ship. I don't know if I really want one. But I need discs for them, and uh, 
I have side quest stuff, but I have data on there I need to get off. We're halfway through. It's almost been a minute. <laughs> it's halfway through copying four megabytes. Oh, wow. Two of them in the drawer. Side quest power. Oh, man. <sighs> You're putting me to sleep, man. Come on. <laughs> Not much. We're, we're waiting for something to copy. That's what's up. But we have a 7100 uh, Power Macintosh here that uh, I recently picked up. And it has a G3 upgrade in it and everything. So, yay! Well, I'm sorry. We are actually going to wrap up the stream in a minute because it is, it is nearly midnight here and I have to go to bed. But, uh... So I picked one up to my school. One I left behind was considerably larger. Could be a difference. Uh, so the Image Rider 1s, uh, there was... There was a different model. It wasn't called an Image Rider. There was a different one that they had. Maybe it was an Apple Dot Matrix or something. Now, the Image Rider 2s, they're all the same, but one is... A few models are heavier than the other. Now, if... Hold, hold on a second, Raw Elements. If it was an Image Rider LQ, if it was an Image Rider LQ, that's letter quality. If it's still there, and you could ship it to me, my heart would explode because I've been looking for one of those for a long time. They're basically Image Rider twos, which which are big as it is, but even larger. So if it's an Apple Image Rider LQ. It would it would probably say it on the back or the front badge would say LQ, but it has the design style of the Image Writer two, not the Image Writer one. It's, the shipping is gonna kill me on its own right. So, yeah, the Image Writer Bigly edition. Oh, I saw an Image Writer LQ on eBay. Of course, they want a ridiculous price for it, and the shipping would probably obliterate the thing. And then there's a guy in Chicago that has one, but although with the air pr airline prices the way they are these days, <laughs> probably spend twenty dollars to fly to Chicago, pick up an image writer, <laughs> go home, <laughs> be some interesting carry-on luggage. <laughs> what do you got in there? Oh, it's a dot matrix printer. Don't don't worry about it. Oh boy, we're getting a little crazy here, but that's okay. Or is it? I don't know. All right, that's uh. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Someone who's used to shipping bulk and stuff. Uh, well, raw elements. Hit me up on Twitter or Discord if you uh, if you find out what that printer is. I am very interested if it's an LQ. Underscore very. We could trade something good for it. But uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's. I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up here. Any other questions? Anything else that? Uh, Anybody has questions about or? <laughs> yes, I, I I understand that Royal Months. No no rush, but when you do get back there, that'd be cool. But yeah, so this is our seventy one hundred. We have eighty eight megabytes of uh, memory on here. Oh, that's sticky. So we don't need that. Um, ninety megabytes built in now. Uh, I don't know about that. Poster notes is 88, so who knows? I've, I've had zero shipping updates, Jay. I think they're closed for the weekend. Will you fix your workgroup servers? Um, yeah, I guess so. I have to recap one of them at least. Um, where can I find it? And I do not have a Discord server. However... Uh, I am part of uh, a MacYak Discord server, so we... Uh, the Mac Yak Podcast is a podcast I'm a member of. We do a video podcast every Thursday at uh, 8 p.m. Let's, uh, that, that deserves a new sticky note, I think. Let's uh, change to a nice green. Let's make that big. We, uh, we got Chicago over here. 
Oh, we need it bigger than that. There we go. Jay, the House of Moth, right there. Uh, he put in a link to the Discord if you want to join. Click on that. We are a friendly bunch of people. So the Mac Yak Podcast is every Thursday night at 8 p.m. Oopsie. Eastern. So that's like New York time. Come join us. We have a, we have a, a party. We have a special guest lined up. Uh, without saying their name, they accepted for this week. So that'll be exciting. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, this, this keyboard's pretty neat. I like this keyboard. As the mouse almost falls off the desk. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, boy. Wee! Eep. All right, I'm, I'm getting loopy here. I'm going to say goodnight. But thank you for watching. And I hope you got your ASMR fix in with this keyboard and the, the startup chime of this machine. But uh, let's go transition back to here. But I uh, wonder if there's an ADV to PS2 adapter. They, there might be. I'm not sure. There's probably USB ones. But uh, that's about it. Um... All right, Raw Elements, if you're on... I think you're on the Discord, yeah. Send me a, an image to that, or send it to me on uh, email, mac84tv at gmail.com. I will be your sleuth, and I will take a look at that image and tell you what it is. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I always love the EEP also. You know what? We're, we're going to get one more EEP before we go, and then we're then we're signing off. So, it's a, it's a good night EEP. It's a, it's a, yeah, you can add the EEP. I did a, a video on it. Uh, through, uh, it's actually on Big Sur I did a video on, but look, look at my YouTube history. You can see that. Here's here's the final leap for the night. Eep. There we go. And uh, we're going to shut down now. So uh, thank you everybody for watching. Shut down. There we go. I would love to know the original story behind that, but I uh, guess that's it for now. So let me fumble with this trackball uh, and find the YouTube and stream button. But it's been real, folks. Thanks for tuning in, and uh, see you guys later. Bye.